Uh, we are back with another episode of Gladiator Diaries, Gladiator Diaries episode 9. Um, before we dive into the episode, if you've found this episode, then you should also go and find our Instagram page, Gladiator Diaries, so you can stay up to date with all that good stuff. Um, but for the meantime, how you doing, mate? You said you just got back from sparring. How's the week been? We're getting yes. closer. Yes, yes, yes. The uh, The violent mentality is slowly creeping in the 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 nice polite kind young man is now becoming a treacherous animal no, i'm joking <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm always going to be the kind nice young man but um that's if you think i am i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um anyways um now nah, but yeah training has been very good this week i feel like i think i mentioned this before I, I believe i'm peaking at the right time everything's seeming to roll around right when it needs to um, I've just come back from sparring, uh, had some really good rounds with uh, Will Curry, obviously my main training partner, and Simeon Powell and Luke Trainer, who are also in their own right, absolutely amazing fighters at the top of their game in their own respect to promotions as well. Um, so yeah, man, like everything's firing on, firing on all cylinders. Uh, I believe I'm fit. I believe I'm ready. Um, you know, um, they've helped me out obviously really, really like a lot. Um, you know, coming down to this sparring session because it's my last, like, little pretty much last sparring session before the fight. Now everything's in terms of it's just going to be try and put a bit less pressure on the joints and stuff like this. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a good day. It's been a good week. Uh, trucking along. Next week will be the last sort of quite hardish week, and then and then tapering down before fight night, baby. One of the things you mentioned super briefly uh, before we started recording was about uh, travel, like how much you have to do in a week in order to to get to all the places you where you usually go to train and stuff. Like how how much of that, how much of your time it is taken up by just just traveling around to go to different gyms, bro. I ain't got time to do shit. Like, if anyone asks me to do anything through the week, I'm just like, nah, it ain't happening. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, genuinely. Northampton takes me about an hour and a half one way, sometimes two hours depending on traffic. So that's on Mondays that I have to do. Obviously, don't take that's not even taken into account. I have to do privates and then training with my dad and stuff like this. Uh, for wrestling, I've got going to Central London to Holborn. Um, for Jiu Jitsu, going to Hodger Grace's Academy in Hammersmith again, driving another hour, uh, sometimes longer again because bloody traffic. There was. I don't know what you you think about this, but how is it called an accident when it happens all the bloody time? I don't get it. <laughs> I swear to God, every time I'm on the boat, oh, there's an accident. Oh, is it an accident, really? Or is it just people being silly? Do you know what I mean? Listen, I ain't going to... I can't say anything because I'm probably a crap driver at some points as well. Like, do you <laughs> know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a freaking Lewis Hamilton by any means, but, you know, especially if you see the scratches up on the side of my car, even though I've got a nice car. But... um this is what happens when you drive down down them country lanes. But um, yeah, mate, I swear to God, like half of it is just sitting in bloody traffic, and then you know, go a lot of it. I'm you know, I, I'm going to teach my, my 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 personal training clients and stuff like this. So realistically, like time gets taken up a hell of a lot. I drive a lot, man. Like I think you know, I, I hear other fighters as well. They travel sometimes, you know, two and a half, three hours and, and, and stuff like this. And But I just believe it's just part of the game. I think it, belie I believe it makes you feel like you're sacrificing even more. It makes you feel like you're putting yourself in within the, uh, the, the, the treacherous depths of, um, of the preparations leading into a fight. It makes you feel like you can overcome anything. So as much as it sucks sometimes, I mean, I guess travel's part of it. This is why, like I say, my time is very limited uh, through the week and even, even more so now, weirdly enough, I don't know. I feel like now my time gets clogged up even more. Maybe it's just because because of my uh, my mind just going over so many different things all the time. I definitely go off on tangents, that's for sure. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, look, I got this is why I got myself an, another reason why I got myself a nice car, nice and relaxing. I feels like I'm I'm just chilling in my front room at home, just like do you know what I mean. Got my nice music playing, got the speakers rolling. So, do you know what I mean? It's part of the game. I'll say it's part of the game. Even though it's like a like a weekly block of something that you then do again and again, does it, I, I would imagine at least to some degree, having to do all of that keeps it a little bit fresh in terms of like you have different things to do on different days. And so it doesn't just feel as 
like to some degree, right? You're still you're still getting up and training every day, but it's like it adds a little bit uh, of variation, which I, I feel like must help in in even like the smallest sense of just like it not feeling like you're yeah. just doing the same like, thing like over and the, over. Yeah, the mundane. Uh, do you know what? I think the biggest variation comes from which energy drink I decide to to choose on the way <laughs> on the way to a training session uh, in the mornings. Um, I try not to drink them too often because I know they're they're not great for you. But you know, whilst my body's young and fresh, I mean, I guess a little one here or there wouldn't hurt. Um, to be honest, the like even um, I've got a guy who's helping me with uh, with my social media. Um, he asked asking me for pictures or asking me for content. You're going to be getting the same shit week <laughs> in week out. Variation in terms of where I'm going, but. And every day is different. However, it is the same thing. I only change it up every now and then. Like today, we I would normally do a, a striking session with me and Will and my dad, but we end up doing some sparring because I needed it, you know? So um, I guess there's a bit of variation there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. We can. We, the only thing I'll say that really 100% changes is what I actually decide to do with my evenings on the weekends, which... I don't know if I've I've mentioned before, but I've been enjoying time by myself. Just, I mean, you, you got to be some sort of psychopath to go and watch Saw by yourself, which is literally what I did the other week. Do you know what I mean? So, um, literally just sitting there in, in 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 a cinema watching people get their heads chopped off, and I'm just like, yeah, well, this is what I like to do with my spare time <laughs> on my own. Do you know what I mean? So the variation comes from you know, what I like to do with my evenings potentially on the weekends. But as it gets close to a fight, I don't want to freaking go nowhere. I travel enough as it is for training. So I'm just kind of like, do you know what? I'm just chill at home, eat some sugar-free something and <laughs> just like, you know, I, I like it. It, I, I guess when, 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 when you're going to battle and you're going to war, I, f I feel like being on your own is quite a peaceful, there's a peaceful calm about it and I do enjoy it. And um, I know afterwards I'm going to be wanting, you know, after I go and get the victory, I want to be partying and doing some more miscellaneous things. But I think for the most part, um, a bit of solidarity, is that the word? Mm. Um, for myself, it's quite a nice thing. But yeah, in terms of answering your question, um, variation comes mainly on the weekends i guess yeah yeah i imagine like even though it's a huge part of the sport being around teammates and always being on the mats with them and stuff like that i imagine that those times where you do get to just like it is just you and you're not doing anything because even like even though you do spend a lot of time traveling and stuff you're traveling like but as much as like it you're not mm -hmm. training it's still not that relaxing like it's more yeah. relaxing than training but like uh, sometimes if i've got to travel somewhere and it's you know it, it's like a decent travel it's not just it's not just like a half hour away but if it's a couple of hours or something it can take it out of you because you just like you're concentrating the whole time on where you're going yeah, instead mate, of just like i 100 percent agree with you i think this is something that people don't take into account when it comes to the fight game it sounds all handy dandy for for the average Joe. Oh yeah, oh just got to train twice a day and that's it. <laughs> Your day's done. There you go. I'm freaking laughing. What? How nice would it be to be a professional athlete? But then obviously you see what the grueling training sessions. You know, um, what 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 goes into those sessions. Um, but at the same time, it's like yeah, like you said having to go from one place to the other, having to sit behind the wheel and concentrate on where you... So I know I'm a bit of a culprit for this, but there's been times where I've been like almost... It's, I don't know, it's probably bad to admit this, but I've, I've almost fell asleep at the wheel. Like, not to say that I would ever do that, but you feel like your eyes and your energy like really like going down. And I'm just like... And now I've got to go and train as well. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like the amount of time I get to sleep is like limited. If I get a nap, I'll be lucky if it's 40 minutes and then having to jump into the car or jump to the train. And yeah, like you said, you can't really relax. I mean, when I'm on the train, I mean, there's all these people about, do you know what I mean? You're rushing from one place to the other. I guess it gets your heart rate going and gets you a bit more warmed up in a way. Um, but yeah, man, it's, uh, it's, it's a madness. That in itself is part of training, you know? And um, I think that's what makes this career so unique 
and uh, obviously you you'd probably see it yourself. You know, having to go from play, especially in London. The good thing is that London in London is everything's accessible, but the means of how accessible it is, it's still an hour, like at least one way. Do you know what I mean to get anywhere? Yeah, yeah. I I only ever have to come to London for events, and I don't I don't live anywhere near London, and where I live is nothing like London. So it's such a totally different experience. But like you said. Whilst I'm there, I think about constantly like, oh, it's so great being able to get anywhere, super easy. Whereas, you know, where I live, if you want to get anywhere, there's a train. It's probably once every hour. Like, it's just not as easy. Mm -hmm. But then also when I leave London, I'm like, I can relax a little bit. It's not constant go. You know, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> there is no breaks in London. It is it's a constant battle, isn't it? It's a constant battle between, oh, the freshness of the countryside, but the the almost the convenience and ease of the center of the city and the vibe of the center of the city it's so it's weird because i do compare london to like new york but like especially when you see it when it gets really busy especially during christmas and and stuff like that when people are wanting to go out more uh into london and walk around and stuff and they put all the decorations on and stuff like, that. like new york's exactly the same like freaking hustle and bustle all the time i do like it uh like when I when I do go in for for like my medical checkups and stuff like that, um, I do like going in into like Bond Street and stuff like that. I've always imagined like you know, it'd be pretty cool to just be chilling with like I don't know maybe your Lambo out in uh, out in Bond Street. You got an apartment somewhere like you know. It's I guess there's always like those little fantasies and thoughts that run through your mind, but um, yeah, I do think nothing really does beat the freshness of the air of the countryside. Um, and being like around like green surroundings and stuff like that, like nature just, it, it really brings good vibes. You know what I mean? It like gives you a good energy. Um, so yeah, I guess me and you got to be, got to be happy to be suburban boys. <laughs> I was going to say how, like, I know that you don't live like directly in the middle of London, but how, how long does it take you to get into like the center? Like, to be honest with you, bro, um, it takes me really like 10 minutes to get to a station, but from that station, Chorley Wood, I mean, it's far, man. I mean, to get into the center of London and then it's, it's a bit of a ball ache because no Ubers, you can't call an Uber from here. You can take an Uber to here, but you can't get right. an Uber from here. You have to actually like arrange an actual taxi to get you anywhere to like any station or whatever. So that's the only hassle. And then roads are narrow and there's bloody branches and potholes everywhere. I've literally changed two two tires just this past week. So like, do you know what I mean? It's like it's an absolute madness, mate. Um, there is a massive cost to the countryside as well as a as a convenience and a luxury. Um, but yeah, man. I mean. What can I say? At least I can. I really, if I look at it like blankly, it is quite convenient for me to get into London. It's just when I'm sitting there on like Zone Seven or Zone Eight, and we know that Central London's like Zone One. It's like that's the a bit of the like the long thing. But aside from that, I mean, at least there is easy access if I'll need it, which is great. Yeah, um, I. Uh... I hadn't thought about this until until we've started speaking about this specific topic. But um, before we started this podcast, I believe I think it was like a couple of weeks before, maybe I say a couple, maybe more like three weeks to a month. But we'd already spoken about doing it and we're in the process of setting it up. And then, uh, of course, I was covering the Cage Warriors event in London that, of course, Will fought out as well. Um, so I was getting a tube to the O2 uh, and as I get to the stop for the O2 uh I I just get off I take like literally one step and someone steps out in front of me and I kind of move to the side and then I realized that it was your dad and I was like wait but it took me a second because I was like what's that and then after that is when I saw you and Will as well and I was like wait a minute <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know how we managed to time that uh and obviously I managed to catch up with you um <laughs> and then obviously I saw you yeah. in the event anyway, yeah. so it didn't matter. But uh, <laughs> considering how often, how frequent those those tubes to that station run, and just I that, got there early to just to just sit about for a bit before going into the event. The timing of that is crazy. I know it's just, just <laughs> mad coincidence, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It was all written in the stars, mate. It was all written in the stars. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mate, funny. Um. There's a 
a big UFC event this weekend that we should probably get into. Uh, I'm yeah, sure. Sure. I'm sure as much as people want to hear us talk about trains all day and the the, the pluses and minuses of living in a big city. Um, <laughs> these, these are things that gross the attention of the wider public. Do you know what I mean? These are things that everyone wants to know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, they, they don't want to hear us talk about, you know, two of the biggest fights of the fights? year. Rather us talk about, Talking about. You know. I mean, we, 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 we don't even really talk about fighting on, on, on this channel do we do you know what i mean it's like kind of like a every now and then we kind of bring it up do you know what i'm saying <laughs> oh, um the we spoke about it very briefly on the last episode that the the changes that happened to ufc 294 that uh have made it a better card like i'm way yeah. more excited for this card now um with these changes um speaking of changes of... bro i'm sorry to cut you oh, but no, freaking kamaru Usman. Talk about changes. If you saw the before photo of you, him at 170 and him at 185, it's like literally night and day, bro. I swear to God, like everything's just filled out. Like I'm just like, <laughs> wow, this guy looks like he'd be a 205er. Do you know what I mean? Like that, like the pictures side by side, it's like in spot the difference, there'll be so <laughs> many differences that you could see from one photo to the next. And he just seems like he's just filled out much more, which is mad. Just thought I'd say that, sorry. <laughs> no, I, I I think he definitely would have gone up to middleweight sooner if it hadn't have been for Izzy. Because he always yeah. said, like, we're never going to fight each other. Um, of, of course, it gets interesting if he beats Chimaev because he's already been told that it this is a number one contender's fight. Um, so if he beats Chimaev and then is going to fight Strickland, it gets quite interesting to see how that's going to work with him and Izzy. Strickland. He's already exactly. beaten Strickland, yeah. So this is uh you know Izzy will want crazy. the Strickland MMA rematch math. As well. MMA math, man, is crazy. It, it, ne it never it never goes in the direction that you want it to go. It's always like this, do you know what I mean? Like a pinball machine. Completely yeah. chaotic. But this is what we love about the fight game. We love to find out and see uh what's gonna happen. But um yeah, no, nah, it's 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 mad because either way you're gonna get some really interesting fights come out of it. Do you know what I mean? You're going to see how really good is Strickland. And they've trained together as well. It's just mad. This MMA game, everyone's it's such close proximity, isn't it? Um, yeah. Especially like in the US as well. But um, yeah, loads of inter interesting fights can be made from the outcomes of this weekend. Yeah, it's so crazy because you, you take Paolo Costa in and you put Usman in and it changes so much. Like, it, mm. there's so many questions to have. I think just like the, the most interesting part to me is Chimaev is the one who was fighting anyway, but by changing the opponent he's fighting, there's so much more that we're going to find out about Chimaev. Like, I don't think we would have... The only thing I think we would have learned in him fighting Paolo Costa is how he deals with guys that are big middleweights because he looks big but like obviously yeah. we haven't seen that so that's the only thing really but against Usman I'm like I I don't know if he can take Usman down I, I don't know that's like that fight is incredible I can't wait yeah yeah no nah, that 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 fight for me is is uh is definitely one to watch so many stylistic uh differences that that are being pushed forward to the forefront you know like 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 you're saying about you know we've got Paolo Costa who's who's a bit more of a brawler striker you know but he you know he's quite heavy got 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 heavy hips and stuff like that but you know obviously Chamaya's re wrestling pet i really think this is a better matchup and it's actually much more of an even fight in terms of skill set if you're looking at like yeah. skill by skill so um yeah, mate. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Like, like I said, and it's going to be prime time for UK uh, fans as well. This is the amazing thing. Not having to wake up at bloody two in the morning to watch something. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very looking forward to this weekend. That's for sure. Um, you mentioned it being uh, prime time. We should briefly, before we get on to talking about the main event, and of course, there's a big light heavyweight matchup on, on the main card as well. So we'll touch on that as well. But um, you mentioned it being UK time. There is a couple of UK fighters on this card, even which uh, is always yep. something that I'm keeping an eye on. Um, we got Nathaniel Wood back on this card. Uh, excited to see him back in there because he's looked great since going yep. up to featherweight, yep. which. Uh, when it first happened, 
I was confused. And then, like, when you find out, you know, that those photos of him cutting weight at bantamweight were insane, like, absolutely insane. It never struck me as a as a particularly big bantamweight. But then you see, yeah, and he is like, there is no water or fat on him. I just don't yeah. know how he made that weight. And he's yeah, he, so he, good he was the, he was dying to make bantamweight. I remember watching him weigh in for a Cage Warriors event once. I think it was when I fought Nasilia. Mm, no, maybe it was before that, actually. Uh, no, yeah, it was definitely before that because I think he was already in the UFC at that point. Um, but yeah, and I like he looked completely drawn out. I remember was just sitting there at the weigh-ins um, getting ready for that fight. And um, yeah, man, like it, it, proper, like even in, 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 in Feather, what you see him when he weighs in, you can see he's, he's definitely a lot more filled out. So it's definitely the weight class for him. Um, he's probably packed on a little bit of muscle as well. Um, I guess with injuries as well, when when you have certain injuries, you're able to work with different parts of your body and different muscles and you naturally fill out in different areas. And, you know, so it was a very smart move for him. He's doing very well and uh, long may it continue. Uh, we also have uh, Mohamed Mokayev on this card. Um, I did not expect to see Mokayev back this year after that submission that he was put through earlier this year in London, where he got the submission win in the end, but like his leg, I thought he was going to be out for at least a year after that. Yeah, I, do you know what? I'm not going to lie. To, but do you know what? This is crazy because I, I've also been in the same position where everyone thought I was going to be out for forever. But realistically, I got injured in September of that 2021. I was back by like April of 2022, like in terms of back Jeez. into like full camp. What? That's, oh. only, that's, that's you know, that's not really such a massive long time for such a gruesome knee injury. And same for him. That knee looked buggered. I was like, yeah. oh my God. God, like how the fuck he managed to escape that really baffles me, bro. Like, but obviously, it, you know, his toughness, uh, his technical ability, um, his composure, everything. And to get the submission afterwards was absolutely amazing. So the fact that he's got in so early, um, he's, I think he's kept quite quiet on the socials uh, leading up to the fight. But um, fair play to him, man. Do you know what I mean? But I think a fighter's body and what it can do and how it can react uh, to, to operations and stimuluses like that, I think is absolutely amazing. So I do believe fighters are built different. And uh, that that's definitely uh, goes the same for uh, Mokhaev, um, absolute animal and very young, you know, young tissues as well. So very quick with healing. So fair play to him. Let's, uh, I think everyone's looking forward to seeing him back into the cage. Yeah, he's got, I think he's the feature prelim on this card against Tim Elliott, um, who, Previously fought for the flyweight title, so big opportunity for him. And uh, yeah. I believe he has less than a year to beat John Jones's record for being long for being the youngest UFC champion. Um, so it's a uh, it's a big deal for McKay of this well, fight. Yeah, exactly. If he wins this, he'll be top ten. So yeah, he's already ranked, yeah. and he'll be wanting to get in there again. So uh, yeah, these the, the record's going to be uh, it's going to be close, man. But um, Obviously, that injury put put a little bit of a, a doorstop on 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 chasing that, um, but uh, it's good to see him back. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and uh, definitely looking forward to seeing him perform. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, moving up to the the main card. Uh, like I said briefly, there's a there's a light heavyweight fight with potentially pretty big implications for who will be next uh, for a title shot. Um, it is such a contrasting fight because I feel like. Magomed Ankalaev, you know what to expect from him, but you just can't stop him from doing it a lot of the time. Like, I, I kind of know what to expect from his performances most of the time. And Johnny Walker couldn't be more the opposite of that. Like, obviously, incredibly unpredictable. We've seen him go through this this transformation into to being a bit more calculated. Um, and so I'm interested to see how that works against a guy that is so good everywhere, like Ankalaev. Like, this matchup is super interesting. It's very interesting. Uh, Ankalaev, the southpaw, um, you know, good grappling, um, strong, you know, heavy rear side left hand. Um, you know, he's got a lot of powerful tools. Um, he can mix it up. Like, like I say, he can really mix things up if he needs to. I, I don't believe that's the same case for Johnny Walker or... I, I don't think there's going to be quite a similar ability to to to, to mix things up as Ankalaev can do, but obviously in the striking department, 
very unpredictable, as you said, by Johnny Walker. Very explosive. He's become a bit more calmer, uh, sort of a bit more composed with his approach. Um, so this could be like a bit of a chess match, you know, potentially. Uh, if Ankalaev decides to mix it up, it may become a different, you know, it may become a bit of a different fight. But it's very interesting because both are explosive. Both have knockout power. Um, the unpredictability match with like the the composure of of Ankalaev um, is going to be an interesting fight to see. I personally believe that Ankalaev will, will obviously, you know, in my opinion, get the job done just from a skill set uh, standpoint and um, the way he's able to pressure the fight. Um, but like I say, you can never count out Johnny Walker. He's uh, an incredible athlete and uh, a great fighter. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I'm honestly surprised that Ankalaev hasn't become champion yet. Like, I feel like people have been saying for at least a good two years now that he, he was going to be the guy. Obviously, he had the, the vacant title fight with, with Jan Blachowicz that ended in a draw that, that really seemed to set him back a little bit in terms of the at least the UFC's perception of him because they, they uh, were not big fans of that fight and the way that it played out. Um, it was a strange, it was a strange one. I, I feel like... I mean, Johnny Walker's put together a pretty good run, so he probably could get himself another shot of the belt by beating Johnny Walker. But Ankalaev is in a strange position where I feel like it more people, if it was a different division and a different fighter who had put together those wins and come that close and looked that good doing it, I, I feel like more people should be calling for him to have mm. a title shot again. Well, I know that yeah. it was a draw, but... It's crazy. Yeah. He seems to be out for ages in between his fights. Uh, put it this way, bro. Uh, like, my, my last performance, it was good, but, you know, it was all right. Like, I got the win. That's the main thing. But you need something spectacular. You need something to grasp the fans, which is why I tune in November 4th for that performance to unveil itself. But um, nice little plug there, right? Um, <laughs> anyways, nah. But um, I think that's what he's missing. He's missing the performance that's going to really stand out. I mean, when you watch Jamal Hill and Glover Teixeira, you thought, wow. When you when you, when you, when you, when you saw uh, even uh, Teixeira and Prohaska, you thought, wow. Like, these are the fights that you're looking at and you're thinking, God damn, that's a fight to remember. That's something to watch. And, you know, obviously, don't get me wrong, he still did a good, it was still a good fight between him and Blahovic, but it didn't have that quite the same wow factor. Um you know, a lot of this thing in this game is being able to market yourself and to be able to sell yourself. I do think Anchor Live has got quite a massive uh, fan base, uh, especially in that part of the world. Um, you know, it's just the thing is, it's like even for, even I'm thinking about this even for myself. You need to be able to branch out to the American public because that's essentially where the UFC started. So you need to really branch out to those areas and be able to connect with people there and stuff like this. And all these things play a part, not just even just getting the win inside the cage, you know. And obviously, I could tell he's very emotional, upset after the fight. He did uh, express his frustrations post fight which may have not done him any justice. Um, but obviously, you know, your emotions are running wild. You're thinking that you're going to go for the belt and then you know the, these things aren't happening. So I do feel a big win here in impressive fashion will definitely put him right back up there into the title contention. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you just got to go out and get spectacular performances. This is what it's all about. This is the entertainment business. You got to go out there and freaking put it all on the line. So I think it goes no different for any other fighter in the division. So, uh, but yeah, if you're looking at who deserves it the most, obviously Anchor Live would be the top of that list for sure. Yeah. Um, we briefly spoke about this uh, on the last episode when we spoke about the news of these fights being put together, but um, a nice little bit of, uh, I guess, symmetry with Alexander Volkanovsky rematching Islam Makachev, their first fight, UFC 284, is of course where you came back and fought Tyson Pedro. So uh, we get to see that fight again, this time in Abu Dhabi, instead of being in Australia. Um, and of course, the fact that it has been put together on less than two weeks notice. Um, at the big One of the big talking points that I've been writing about a lot this week is kind of whether people see it as Volk has nothing to lose and that helps him or whether 
whether the the lack of pre uh, preparation in a full camp will will hurt him ahead of this fight. Where do you see that that kind of balance in terms of the the benefits and stuff? Because I, I was listening to to Michael Bisping speak about this earlier, and he was talking about how he often felt like he had overtrained going into his fights, and so he was thinking of it as it might help Volk not having that extra pressure and as long of a camp, you know, coming in feeling fresh and feeling like he's he's saving the day and he's got nothing to lose in doing it. Yeah, well, I mean, give an example with my fight against Pedro. That was on two weeks' notice. I mean, and that guy was supposed to wipe the floor with me. You know what I mean? He's been preparing this whole time for that one opponent. Obviously, then it switches. Different style, different... Uh, uh, completely different um, different rhythms, different things that are going to be thrown at you, having to adjust to a, to a new opponent and, and stuff like this. So, you know, if Volkanovski... Look, I stayed in shape, so I'd be ready to take a last-minute call. So you're training, you're always getting better. So you're, you know... I, I feel like maybe the sense of less pressure of having a fight camp and preparing for somebody may actually play to Volkanovski's advantage maybe he's just been enjoying and free flowing and you know maybe he's already been in shape and the next thing you know oh boom i'm going to take a fight i'm going to go in there have nothing to lose do you know what i mean because you feel like ah, well i've took on two weeks notice we get the belt this is great and that can give you a sense of confidence and confidence in mma is everything so um but on the other side obviously islam's been been preparing yeah, and he's been preparing for a, for one type of opponent, and now he's going to be fighting a different type of opponent. But obviously, he's going to be in shape. He's going to be uh, peaking. He's going to be firing all cylinders. He's going to be like you know, he's been on proper fight mode. So you might have a bit of a a, a mental edge in the aggressiveness factor, um, and knowing that he's gotten a win over him before. Uh, maybe having a bit of a chip on his shoulder thinking, oh, well, you took on two weeks notice. Well, I'm going to show you. Okay, fine. Don't take fights on two weeks notice. So it's very interesting. You've got two contrasting uh, sides um, in terms of what their position is and how they're going to be feeling. But um, if you ask me, who do I think, who do you, who do I think the, the bigger advantage, I think it would actually go to Volkanovski um, in terms of the mental game. Um, but again, skill set wise and, and fitness level and stuff like this um, are yet to be determined, obviously, on the night. Yeah, it's such an interesting one. I think that um, both guys obviously deserve a, a ton of credit for taking a fight of this magnitude on, on yeah. short notice because, like, Islam it knows that people debate the first fight's result and he's coming at it from a point of, like, I'm going to prove you wrong. And with Volk, like, the, there is, there is, I think, some weight in him having less to less to worry about less on his shoulders with the with the fight not being in Australia with the fact that he is taking it on short notice but also the flip side of that is that he's been campaigning for this rematch ever since the first fight and in taking it on short notice if he loses there is no trilogy there is no sack there is no third shot at this like it's, true. It, it's 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 such an interesting thing where there are there are so many contrasting factors going into it and then you've got the fact that the first fight was a fight of the year contender like incredible display the top yeah. two pound for pound guys in the world at the time like just ridiculous fight <laughs> i mean it depends how close this fight you say there won't be no trilogy but what if it, what if this fight ends up in the same fashion being extremely close do you know what i mean and then mahachev takes another couple of wins Again, Volkan obviously gets another couple of wins and it comes right back round again. You know what I mean? I mean, how many times have we seen uh, Figueredo versus Marino? Do you know what I'm saying? So it just depends what the state of the division is going to be like. There are guys that are coming up and that are going to be title contenders, you know, um, and, and you've got like Gamrot and stuff like that. You, you, you've got guys that are that are definitely coming up uh, in, in the game. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, it's a crazy, it's just a crazy thing. At the end of the day, they're going to fight. I think the way people should look at the fight is they're fighting. Doesn't matter what factors go into it, the results, all that matters. And I think when you go into that fight, like Islam said, he's right in saying, don't give me that. It's, it was two weeks notice. 
because at the end of the day, you stepped in there to take the fight. Obviously, they're, they're, there's all these other things, how much money you're getting paid, blah, 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 and, you know, what, what circumstances. Everyone wants to fight for a belt, you know? So I think Volkanovski is going to bring the best of him. Mahacha is going to bring the best of him. They're going to go throw down in the middle of the cage and see what happens. And uh, I think people should look at it just like that, like as if they're fighting with equal circumstances. Um, because I think in some ways the, the positives and negatives of both will almost even out when they're in the cage together. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be, uh, should be a great night of fights. I'm super excited for this card. Um, I, the stupid thing is I wanted to see, I was excited to see Paolo Costa versus Chumayev and I was excited to see Oliveira and Islam as well. Like, uh, I think that those fights are both really good fights. It's just these two fights that we've got instead are like match up of the year contenders. I, like they I, are I definitely just that think, good. yeah, I definitely think stylistically it worked out probably a little bit, a little bit better in terms of the level of difficulty for each of the fighters. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like obviously with each fighter, you have tendencies, strengths, weaknesses, blah blah blah. I feel like they're they're much more evenly much more evenly matched which i think will provide for more exciting fights i mean who knows it might i don't think it's gonna end up being boring though do you know what i'm saying like i think they're both such interesting very capable they're all very capable fighters and yeah stylistically it's just meant for a more competitive battle which i think in turn will be better for the fans but again who knows um maybe some of these fights can be rekindled in the future you, you know and i absolutely um so uh, the next episode that we are going to do is going to be a bit different um, because, of course, it will be a few days before you head off to Brazil. Um, so we will try and get a live one in so that if people want to join the stream and ask questions whilst we chat about the camp uh, and preparing for Brazil and all that good stuff, then, then people can do that. Um, so as I said at the start of the episode, follow us on Instagram because once we have that locked down for sure, then I'll let everyone know what time that's going to be and, and everything like that. Um, but it, yeah, until the next episode uh, and we will join you to chat about Brazil and all that good stuff. Um, exciting times.